Another concept has to do with the constant changes in the brain. Your brain is not static. At a molecular level, it is literally changing every single day. What's really important for us to understand, however, is that sometimes um, these changes in the brain um, are complex. They're dynamic. They're, it's an integrated system, and it's constantly changed by the individual's learning experiences. And these changes at the molecular level can happen simultaneously in parallel or even before you can see the behavior. So, for example, if I'm teaching a young kid to, to read, I can spend, you know, days, weeks, months, you know, fingering the letters, going over and over and over again, and the kid doesn't seem to read. But then one day, he reads. Now, it's not that in that second, in that moment, he just learned to read. It's because all of those other pieces were finally coming into play. There was all of these very complex, net, complex networks that have to be linked before he can have that ability to show us this behavior. I can read, right? So one of the things that we have to remember as teachers is that the changes are occurring, but they're at a level that's invisible to the naked eye. It's invisible to behavioral uh, observation. So sometimes we as teachers, you know, we can be a little frustrated, you know, that we've tried so many things and the kid's just not getting it. It may be that he is getting it, but he's getting it slowly but surely at a level that we just can't visualize. So what does this mean about um, our teaching? This has a really big impact on what we would consider a natural uh, learning cycle, right? So we connect the learning to prior knowledge. We have them see the, that concept in a larger concept. You know, you can describe what happens. You have input or you do activities for, with this kid. You can see uh, that they can demonstrate that they can actually do that math problem or read that book or whatever it is. Then you review it and you have to have constant repetition for that to really solidify and become a habituated type of behavior. But do we, as teachers, you know, permit these natural learning cycles to run their course? Or do we expect too many things too fast? Or are we up against too many deadlines that we don't allow for this natural process? Are we allowing you know, that slowly but surely those connections to, to form at that molecular level and then have that display of, of behavior of, that shows us that that kid learns? Or are we now rushing off to the next topic before he's actually solidified his understanding or has had enough repetition that that action can now become more uh, automated? So have we built in the time necessary into these learning moments to really consolidate uh, understanding and new learning? This is why some of the most successful education systems in the world, for example, uh, the Japanese, Germans, who always tend to score quite high. And, uh, it's kind of impressive to see that once something is learned, it's really learned. But why is it learned? It's because there's constant regression to prior knowledge to re-strengthen those connections. So, for example, a teacher in a Japanese classroom might walk in and say, OK, guys, get into groups of four. Here's a problem. Use anything that we've talked about in the past three weeks or the past month or the past year or whatever to resolve this problem. So basically it's saying, go back and retrieve it, go back and reinforce it, make sure that we've solidified those connections. There's enough rehearsal that that kind of knowledge can be retrieved easily in the future. So do we allow enough time for that learning cycle to occur?